Carotid artery stenosis is a condition that uh, is, has a high risk for producing strokes and TIAs or transient ischemic attacks. So in Western populations, the most common cause for strokes or TIAs is a narrowing in the carotid artery. It's, stenosis means narrowing, and this occurs in the neck at what we call the carotid bifurcation, right when the common carotid artery splits into the internal carotid artery and external carotid artery. As the internal carotid artery goes up um, directly into the brain, uh, the narrowing right at the origin of that artery um, can cause uh, the stenosis and plaques to form. Um, and the most common cause of problems is when those plaques form a rough edge or a little ulceration and platelets and blood clots accumulate at that region and then go upstream and lodge in arteries in the brain and cause a stroke. So when, when that happens and a patient presents having had a, a warning sign for stroke, which is a TIA, or small completed stroke, and we find that the carotid artery is narrowed uh, on the side referable to those symptoms, uh, the preferential treatment is called a carotid endarterectomy, endarterectomy, which is a opening of the vessel, removing of the plaque, and then a reconstruction of the artery surgically. There's a, another treatment called stenting uh, that uh, is also effective and is uh, preferred in patients with uh, uh, unstable heart disease and cardiac problems uh, because uh, it is usually safer in those circumstances. The surgical treatment um, usually has a higher rate of uh, complete resolution of the neurological symptoms. And so we make a judgment on which treatment is beneficial and certain patients depending on the whole uh, the picture that they have regarding the vascular disease that they have, the cardiac disease, as well as the disease in the, in the carotid arteries and other arteries that are leading to the brain. But carotid endarterectomy is extremely effective in um, stroke prevention um, if it's found uh, early before a devastating stroke uh, occurs. The way carotid artery uh, stenosis is discovered, um, the, a, a basic uh, physical exam with a, a stethoscope sometime can reveal what's called a carotid brewy, and brewy means noise, and so the doctor or nurse can hear uh, through the neck a, a whooshing sound with every heartbeat, and that means the blood is going through a narrowed area. The other uh, quick um, and effective way to diagnose carotid stenosis is with carotid ultrasound. The ultrasound uh, probe is placed on the, uh, each of the arteries on the neck. Uh, it can be imaged, and the degree of stenosis or narrowing can be calculated uh, from the carotid ultrasound. Other ways to uh, a look at carotid stenosis include a CTA of the neck, a CAT scan, CT, and an angiogram, CTA, CT angiogram, which um, a dye is put in the veins and the, this CAT scan is obtained through the neck and the vessels are reconstructed in a, in a 3D fashion and this gives us good anatomical information regarding the arteries. And then the other um, method is called an MRA or magnetic resonance angiography where uh, the same scans are done uh, only with an MRI and then the arteries are reconstructed and anatomical information, degree of stenosis, and particular uh, anatomy, anatomy and anatomical configuration can be um, delineated very, very easily. So these are the three most common ways to diagnose carotid stenosis, carotid ultrasound, CTA, and MRA, and that gives us the information that we need to decide if the carotid stenosis is severe enough to be treated, and then, as I mentioned, the treatment options are um, the surgical treatment or the endovascular treatment if it reaches a certain severity. This is not something uh, people are born with. Uh, it's, it's an acquired problem um, and it's caused by atherosclerosis or hardening of the arteries or plaque forming in the arteries. And of course the risk factors that we know for that are hypertension, uh, diabetes, high lipid profile, smoking, and, 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 and uh, 
heart disease in general is associated with carotid artery disease also. So um, those are the main controllable risk factors. Genetics does play a role in uh, determining whether people are going to develop atherosclerosis in the future. Stenting and the, um, the carotid artery surgery are extremely effective in patients that um, have carotid artery narrowing that's uh, severe or is uh, severe and symptomatic, which means they've had symptoms from it. Sometimes the arterial narrowing is discovered uh, in patients without any prior symptoms, and a judgment has to be made uh, regarding the degree of stenosis and whether uh, the treatment is warranted in those particular patients. In patients where the narrowing is not quite so severe, um, they can be treated with uh, antiplatelet agents such as aspirin and uh, there's another one, uh, Plavix or Clopidogrel, that's, that's often used and other antiplatelet medications uh, can be utilized in those cases that don't require uh, surgical or stent uh, endovascular treatment. The success rate though with the, with the carotid artery surgery and the stenting is extremely high in uh, preventing uh, future uh, stroke events if it's caught early.